hello, hello, hello! It's Dev Diary time! I am Rose, and apologies, there's not been many videos lately. Uh, Rosebud has learned to walk, but kind of. He's learned to crawl, and he's learned to stand up and walk along furniture. It's giving me gray hairs. But you know what's not giving me gray hairs? This Dev Diary. It's called Bits and Bobs, and it's very fitting. So I'm actually quite excited because several of the things on or mentioned in this dev diary. I had mentioned before in that wonderful video I did about CK2 being better than CK3 because it had little quality of life things that we're just missing here in CK2, CK3. But they're adding them in, so that's exciting. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, first up is something I didn't mention was the kill list. And so in CK2, they added a kill list, kill list with the Holy Fury update, which lets you see who you had killed, it lets you see who other characters had killed, and of course, if you didn't know they had killed it, it was sign of hidden. You, you could only see the people that you knew had died, and this included prisoners in your dungeon, people on duels, murders, uh, beheading people, you know, however you decided to end their life on this planet, it was recorded. It was great. Kind of missed it in CK3, but it wasn't a big, big deal. But they're adding it back in. Thing is, it can only be seen if you know that person has killed someone. So if you think, oh, Kaiser Heinrich, everyone loves Kaiser Heinrich. He's never murdered anyone, but your player in Kaiser Heinrich, and you can tell that you murdered people. So the button only appears if you know that person has killed somebody, which I think is fine. Makes it very easy to tell if someone's murdered someone or not. And they did include an image of, here's what it's gonna look like. It was executed on 15th of September. I guess he, he didn't like Dietrich or Lutpold and decided to end their life. Poor Lutpold, he was only 22. How? Poor guy. Okay, what they added here though, this was something I really complained about, is the fact that we could not attach armies to other armies. My God, that was frustrating. Though it doesn't look like we'll be able to tell someone to attach their army to us, which I'm sort of disappointed about because they didn't mention it here. Uh, you know, it'd be nice if you could tell your allies, hey, attach to me, but you can attach your armies to others. So I'm guessing they're probably doing something behind the scenes with the at, with your allies and your allies will try to attach to you instead of just following you around like little ducklings. <laughs> um, but there we go. We can attach to follow first armies. This will be in the 1.2 patch, I think. The next one, Bits and Bob, is about the Realm Priest. So we all know just how frustrating it is for the Realm Priest to dislike you and not endorse you. It's very frustrating. I mean, it's also frustrating that you're stuck with some guy who's only got seven, but yeah, that that can't that can be dealt with through murder. Uh, but you know, if you have a Realm Priest that doesn't endorse you, now if you get a strong hook on him, he's basically forced to endorse you because he's so terrified that you're going to you know, let out this secret that he has. Oh, how terrible. He, he has a lover. <gasps> He's not a real priest. Let's hook it. Look, let's hook him. Let's hook him like a fish and make him dangle and give you all of his troops and money. Sounds good. This next little bit is actually more art in that they've da, 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 blah, blah, blah. I can't talk folks. I'm sorry. I haven't had my full coffee yet. <laughs> But what they did was they changed the artwork for the different tribes. So, you know, you're not living in the same sort of tribal hut down in Africa that you are living in Scandinavia, which makes sense. I'm so glad they changed it. And it's quite, they're quite pretty. You can tell just looking at them, the, um, the differences. Like here's, uh, here for Arabian tribes, we've got some nice hide tents. Uh, we have some grass roofed huts here for the African tribes. We have more longhouse style here for the northern tribes. They're also probably made of grass or um, thatch, I should say. The steppe tribes look like circular tents that have covered yurts, I think is what they're called in some area. I don't remember. I'm using my Age of Empires 2 history here, which is probably wrong. <laughs> um, and then here we go for Indian Tibetan. We have more of an open concept uh, building style because it's hot and they want the breeze to flow through, but it looks like it's also a thatched roof, which is historically fitting. The next big change though, is to our reworked dynasty UI. It's giving us more information now, so it tells us who the house head is, and it also tells us their military strength. Uh, let's take a look closer. There we go. It tells us their military strength, the house head, 
the military strength of the dynasty head, which is nice. It, I'm glad they've added some more detail here. Uh, and then down here for dynasty legacies, you, you, they changed the button, which I mean, the other button was pretty, but this is a lot more useful. You can look at it immediately and see where your family is specialized, where have they, how far have they specialized into that area, which is awesome. And I'm quite happy with this one. I really am. It will make it a lot easier, especially if you haven't been the dynasty head for some, whatever reason, maybe you're playing as a minor carling and you're trying to become the max carling or whatever it is. But this, this is going to be nice. The next little bob here is the UI battle. The U battle UI? UI battle. There we go. Woohoo! Battle of the UIs. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going stir crazy in this house in wintertime. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but here we go. They've reworked it a little bit, made it a little easier to tell what's going on. Um, there's some changes here in terms of, you know, what phase we're on, what sort of troops are being used during that section. Yes, Rosebud, it looks very pretty, doesn't it? Uh, this poor defender here, he, he ain't gonna win, I don't think, <laughs> even though he's got an amazing commander. I don't think it's gonna make a difference. He has no men-at-arms, no knights, and he's outnumbered six to one. Uh, I'm sorry, dude, you're done. <laughs> you're, you're done. The other thing they've done is they've changed it for the player characters. So if you notice, Leon here has this lovely, lovely uh, decorated mantling around it, showing that that's you. You are the King of Lyon, and the AI is playing Galicia and Castile. Now, this is kind of nice for single player, but where it's really going to shine, I feel, is in multiplayer, because you can easily look at a map and remember who is who. Because, you know, people change kingdom names, people change duchy names, wherever their primary is, they take more land. So this just easily signifies to you who is a player character and who is the AI, which is a nice little bit. Okay, next up we have rally points. So rally points, there's there's still an issue of, you know, you can teleport your rally point around the map and raise your troops there and you can have your troops across the Mediterranean in a half second, which personally I don't really mind, but I know is not really realistic and some people really, really dislike it. <laughs> Lord Lambert. <laughs> um, but one thing they've done is that when you do raise your troops at a rally point, if they have, if you have too many troops, like here in this picture, they tried to raise 10,000 troops in a province that only had a 2,500 limit. And so the troops automatically split up to, so they don't go over the, um, the supply limit. Which is nice and it'll stop you from, you know, having troops murdered because you've got 20k troops and you don't have any provinces that can hold 20k. So that's very nice. I feel like I keep saying that things are nice, but I mean, they are nice. I'm quite happy to see a lot of these little changes. Um, and if you want to hear more about them, we're going to have Matthew, Black Ninja, one of the CK3 devs, will be on the NoCB podcast tomorrow. Link to that will be in the description box down below if you want to tune in, or you can check out our YouTube channel and watch it probably on Friday. Is it'll go there? It'll go on the other sources on Thursday: Spotify, SoundCloud, NoCB Cast. Because NoCB is best CB, but we can't do that in CK3, so we find whatever CB we can use. All right, and one good CB is of course religion. <laughs> and that's what they've changed here. They renamed Sumanusko to Ukanusko because they've basically taken a whole bunch of different religions that were up here and grouped them under Sumanusko, which is now Ukanusko. And because Sumanusko is a very Finnish name, they decided to pick a different name to make it more inclusive, I should say, more accurate because they weren't all Sumanusko. It's just much easier in terms of gameplay to group them all under one. Otherwise, the religion is a very small, very powerless religion because the territories up here are huge and not heavily populated or developed. And yeah, that's what they've done. All right. CK3 is a beautiful game, but there's some things that are just ugly about it, including some of the characters and traits. So one thing they've done is they're improving how the ugliest ugliness system works on portraits. And 
I'm really not great with faces, so I'm not really seeing a difference between 1.1 and 1.2, but I'm pretty sure that's just me. Um, I, I'm, I'm honestly terrible with faces. I'm not face blind, but if someone I usually know and I know pretty well changes their hair and I see them in a different location, I don't recognize them at first. Nope. I, I didn't recognize my neighbor. I saw my neighbor. I ran into her at the polling, at the um, election poll site and did not recognize her at first until she said hello to me and hello to the little rosebud. Um, and this is the lady that I've lived next to for three years and had many conversations with. Uh, yeah, it just, it's just me. But maybe y'all can see the difference because they've obviously made a difference. It's just. I'm, I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's a little more defined here around his eyes. That's possibly it. Maybe. And the last change mentioned here really is, or the really last change that has an image, is the matrilineal marriages. So matrilineal marriages were kind of an issue before because if you ever notice and you were playing in 1066, you may look at Matilda of Tuscany, who's a great, powerful woman, and... She never marries matrilineally. Never. None of the other female rulers do either. They, you will try and marry them and they'll say, no, minus 500, not a matrilineal marriage, or minus 1,000 or whatever the number is, and then they'd still go and get married to someone else regularly, even though they wouldn't marry you, which was very frustrating. But they have changed it here. So it's default. There's, they've added a rule here. This is all the different um, selections for the rule when you're starting the game. There's default, which is what it currently is. And then you can de default with no player exception. Uh, female dominated realms default to matrilineal, which is cool. Uh, they do have to be a reputable dynasty or an equal realm. They do always. So this is probably what I would play with. All female dynasty members will always go with matrilineal marriages. I assume if they, yeah, this is just sort of making it the dominate the, the main one. Actually, I don't know if I'd always go with this one, but it does. I do like it. And this one is female dominated and equal. So it's making it a little stronger to get married matrilineally. I'll have to do some test games to see uh, if, you know, like Matilda of Tuscany and other female rulers actually do get married matrilineally. Or you can turn it off. You don't like matrilineal marriages and you want to go play like you're playing the original Crusader Kings where female rulers couldn't happen and there were no matrilineal marriages because that game was great, but some things... I mean, matrilineal marriages aren't exactly historical, but in terms of the gameplay, considering you did have female rulers, I mean... It's a gameplay versus history sort of thing, um, is what it is. But, uh, you can turn it off as never, except if it's a female-dominated realm. So, like, if you're playing Mother of Us All or something. Uh, but that's pretty cool. There's also some other changes. There's a little change where you can also name all dynasty members that are born in your court. So, thank God, you know, like, maybe it's not such a big deal if you're not streaming or doing YouTube, but it's very nice when I'm playing to name characters after either people in chat if I'm on Twitch or after Patreon supporters if I'm here on YouTube. And you could do that for one generation before, but then your grandchildren would get names that you just don't want. <laughs> but they did change it. So any dynasty member that's born in your court, you can name, which I quite appreciate. And it's also fun, like, if you're trying to do some, you know, role play gameplay yourself and you want to name every everyone after flowers because it's going to be a very pretty garden of a court we all like gardens here don't we <laughs> and next up we have new event content in their words you can now grow old sick tired and depressed more efficiently with new events that dole out the infirm trait and you know what i don't think i've ever seen the infirm trait at all here in ck3 when in CK2, you get it quite a lot, just sort of telling you, oh, I'm going to die soon before you know you became incapable or died. Um, but that's kind of cool. And there's also, they've expanded the murder scheme with additional events and deadly outcomes, which is nice because I was getting tired of the rug and the map and it, it did get a little repetitive. We need some more there. Um, 
A uh, court physician you recruit as an agent has a chance to purposely mess up treatments of your target. That is very nice. And the court physician can now also treat their own wounds and conditions. They may not be able to, to sew themselves up, but they can direct the guy that's doing it, I suppose. <laughs> uh, there are other schemes and mechanics have gotten numerous content tweaks. We will have to see. Uh, there will be a stream tomorrow on on the Paradox channel where they're gonna show off the 1.2 patch and maybe we'll even get to know the release date. So I'm sure that'll be tomorrow morning, Eastern time. And here it is. So the next stream, yeah, Wednesday, 8 a.m. That's, there's a Hoi 4 Imperator, but there we go, CK3 tomorrow from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. EST, which is 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time whatever they're calling it right now because it's daylight safe. I don't remember what the, well, you had time change. We've had a time change, but it's 4.30 to 6.30 European time, 10.30 to, or, sorry, 4.30 to 6 European time, and then 10.30 to noon Eastern time. And the, hopefully they'll announce when it's coming out. Usually near the end, I would guess, or they might just drop it randomly in there. That'd be kind of cool. But after that, at 3.30 p.m. EST to about 5 p.m. and which would be 9.30 to about 11 Central European time. We'll be doing the No CB podcast where again we will have Matthew on stream talking to us about the last two CK3 dev diaries, the ruler designer and the bits and bobs we just talked about here. Uh, he may also talk to us about, you know, what it was like to work on CK3. We can't talk about any future things, but if it was released you know, if it was shown on the stream earlier, we may be able to talk about it, but we'll have to see. So if you're interested, please tune into that. There will be a link in the description box down below. And I'll see y'all later. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, let me know which changes are you most excited about? What do you want to still see in their future dev diaries about 1.2? Because there's a few things I would like to still see, but we will have to see what they're working on before we discuss what we still would like to come into the game. So, bye guys.